This is a species called uh, Gerbera. And uh, these Gerberas, they were first identified by someone called J.D. Hooker in 1889 in uh, Africa. Till then it didn't have scientific name and all. Discovered means uh, by scientific chaps in the western people. Then uh, this, uh, this species is called uh, I think Gerbera jamesoni Barberton Daisy. And then it's named after a German botanist called uh, Gerber. And uh, this Gerber, it seems he was a friend of that famous uh, Linnaeus. In case you never heard of that Linnaeus, you can look him up. He's the father of this modern classification of uh, plants. And very famous great man. Colorful character also. And then, uh, so, um, it's also called uh, uh, African Daisy and uh, Transvaal Daisy and all other names, common names. Then I'll tell a little bit about this. Uh, there are about 22 species of this Gerbera in the world. And uh, out of them, few are quite commercial and popular. And they are, they are native of this uh, tropical Africa that is uh, I mean that hot region and quite hardy and nice plants and very popular it has got spread uh, by these gardeners into Asia and uh, South America and all wherever that hot nice tropical climate is there they do well in the gardens it's a long lived plant perennial and all and uh, what we see normally, this decorative ones, it's a cross between Gerbera jamesoni and Gerbera viridifolia. And uh, this one is commercially very important in the sense, it's uh, for this cut uh, flower trade, what people keep in vases and all that. For that trade, it is, uh, it's the fifth most popular, it seems, in the world among, because it doesn't wilt easily. And then, uh, so it will last in your vase and all for quite a while. And flowers also quite easily, easy to breed and so on and so forth. It has all the properties needed for uh, this commercial cut, cut flowers trade. Then, uh, uh, it is good for birds it seems. Birds and uh, bees and butterflies, they like the nectar and then it contains some chemical called coumarin, one of the important uh, phytochemical. So, it is uh, it, one property about this is these leaves those deer and all don't eat. Deer means other herbivores also. So, it's uh, it doesn't uh, get controlled by grazing cows and all this. Goats may be able to eat, but not the others. And as far as our Indian gardens is concerned, it's alien because it's not from India. And uh, therefore, uh, it's an African plant, so it's alien. And then uh, apart from that, one of the nice thing about this, this Gerbera plant is that it's not uh, known to be invasive. So it doesn't easily escape from the garden and go wild and become an invasive weed and all. However, it's not a native plant. So if you are a fanatic about native plants, biodiversity garden and all, don't get this. If you are just one of the run of the mill gardener, you can keep it. It's alright. I would give it, rate it as a, among the alien species as one of the better ones because it is uh, not known to be invasive. It's available in all nurseries, you can keep it in a balcony. It likes some direct sunlight every year, a few, a little bit. 
uh, every hour, day some couple of hours and uh, the price and all I don't know but uh, it's all right you can keep if you want not if you are into biodiversity gardening 